This is Macwell, San Marino, the worst national team He's in the, the world. This country, they usually associate it with the most dreadful record in international football. Some of the most lopsided yeah. victories in European football Everyone knows have San involved Marino this trash. nation. In fact, they have broken the biggest win records for other countries. But behind an <laughs> awful record and some of the most abysmal results in international football is a unique story that deserves to be told more. So I give you San Marino, the worst team in the world. All right, we can just skip. The San Marino Football Federation was formed in 1931, but didn't establish a national team until 1986, when a team representing the federation played Canada's Olympic side. Two years later, the small nation was granted the ability to participate in major tournaments, thanks to UEFA and FIFA finally recognizing them. San Marino were at quite the disadvantage during this late. All right, plumber. Uh. Mechanic, bin man, school teacher, jobless, homeless, two kids. Gone. And what made things worse was that most San Marini's players prior to the national team's existence had accepted call ups from the Italian FA. Except for one player, Massimo uh, they Bonini, a player. San Marino's greatest ever footballer. Bonini was just 21 when he joined uh, Juventus back in 1981. He was exceptional in breaking down the opposition thanks to his tactical intelligence and quickly uh, San Marino became an important player for the old lady. The box-to-box -box midfielder was like a battery that never went out. In fact, Bonini's nickname was Platini's Lungs due to his successful partnership with one of the greatest midfielders to play the game. Ooh. One of the finest uh, midfielders uh, of his generation and he helped Giovanni <laughs> Trapattoni's Juventus win pretty much everything and anything you could think of. However, on play. the international side of things, Bonini had to wait until 1990 to play for San Marino's national team. Age 31, the midfielder was starting to slowly see his career winding down, but the thrill of international football was still as fresh as ever. Bonini had 19 caps for his country over 5 years, captaining them 15 times. Oh, so, oh, well. San Marino's first match in a FIFA-sanctioned competition was against Switzerland in the Euro 92 qualifiers at the Stadio Olimpico. No, not that Stadio Olimpico, this one's better. Titani went on to be defeated 4-0 by a Swiss team wearing one of the uh, worst football kits I have ever on. seen in my entire life. Just when I thought things couldn't get any weirder, what? The hell is that supposed to be? San Marino then lost to Romania 6-0 uh, earlier standard, later, standard. but the return fixture at home saw history in the making. San Marino's first ever goal. An equalizing penalty in the no 26th way. minute from Valdez Pasolini. Pasolini no way, being San so Marino scored a goal, I've never seen this in my life. He didn't even fully realize the situation no until way. the ball was in the goal. Unfortunately, San, San Marino, Marino went on to lose goal. this game and the rest of their qualifiers. Oh, finished. okay, okay. So they did score one, but they conceded 33. <laughs> last having conceded 33 goals. I mean, it's La hard when you're playing entered with their first World Cup qualifying competition with just two full-time professionals in Massimo Bonini and Marco Mazza. Other players included amateur goalkeeper Pierre Luigi Benedettini, who worked as a bus driver and would actually drive the, <laughs> the team to driver. games. Oh, I love it though, I love it. Oslo, like, with Norway destroying them They must just have a laugh when they play. Again, I love it. Time in Valley, well and the San Marino's only the conceded game, two early game, goals probably. impressively enough. San Marino then played Turkey, and from a quarter in the 50 second minute, Nicola Bacciocchi scored Titani's equalizer, their second ever Soon. goal and their first from open play. La Serenissima held on for as long as they could, but Turkey would find the winner in the 86th minute. The Crescent Stars added two more, taking advantage of the fatigued and the to win for one. Well, Next was a trip Turkey. to Wembley, and despite losing 6-0, a lot of these players who weren't even full-time footballers, mind you, recall yeah. San Marino's first ever match at Wembley as one of their most memorable moments. Oh, one Speaking of memorable moments, next was Turkey and Sarah Valle. The match was off to a nightmarish start when goalkeeper and bus driver Pierre Luigi Benedettini <laughs> was taken off for injury in the fifth minute. But substitute oh, no. Stefano Muccioli was different sauce that night, making numerous saves to keep a clean sheet and oh, help lad. San Marino get their first ever draw. Following Mad. the incredible clean feat, sheet. the San Marinis were greeted by a four game losing streak, including 6 0 and 7 0 results versus uh, the Dutch. San any Marino's goals there? No, 6 0. No. Losing streak, including no, 6 0 and 7 0 results versus the Dutch. San Marino's last match of their 1994 World Cup qualifiers was against England. England were in danger of not qualifying after losing to both the Norwegians and the Dutch. The three Lions had Come to on, win Sam and Marino. have other results Come on, their way in order to qualify for World Cup 1994 at this point. But as said Come before, on. luckily, England were playing the whipping boys, San Marino. Remember that Holland... Okay, easy defending, easy defend. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, we just assisted him. Well,
in just <laughs> 8.3 music? seconds. Davide Gautieri scored the world's fastest world Oh, that's a San Marino goal. goal. Let's and go. And shocked an entire Let's nation go. that desperately needed Let's to win. Go. Gautieri San didn't even goal. realize his Vamos. feet until after the match when he was pulled by journalists. But not only that, Come on. the San Marinis held on to the lead for 21 minutes. Even though okay, England so went on to win 7-1, at the end of the match, both teams had failed to qualify for the World Did Cup. Did he just say 7-1? So really, one. San Marino won that night. Gautieri's record... San Marino won when they lost 7-1. ...your breaking goal would stand for over 20 San years, Marino and his name would be written in the teams. annals of San Marino's history. The legend himself <laughs> retired from the national team in 2000, and is now actually a computer salesman for his own business, with fans constantly visiting and asking for autograph memorabilia. Let's go. Euro 96 qualifiers, as Love opposed that. to Titani's last qualification campaign, Morgan. had no points won. San Marino finished last, conceding Any goals? 36 goals, however, yes, two he goals. would find the back of the net two twice. Goals. Once goals. through midfielder Pierre Domenico della Valle in the 34th minute versus Finland, then another from Mauro Valentini in the 52nd minute versus They're actually celebrating the goals he scored World Cup 98 yeah, that's, qualifiers that's were even more cruel, with La Serenissima conceding 42 and scoring yeah, not even once. Wales. That gloom would continue into Euro 2000 qualifiers, but at least San Marino would see a 6th ever goal hit the back of the net in a 4-1 loss to Austria Sixth in the Stadio goal. Olimpico. The goal scorer this Incredible. time was 21-year-old Andy Andy Selva in just his second cap for the senior team. Going into All the right. new millennium, San Marino were on a depressing 31 game losing streak. They had only scored 6 goals and conceded a total of 201 oh, in 5 shocking. competitions. A friendly against Moldova in April of 2000 would extend that streak to 32. The journey to Asia for World Cup 2002 was off to a woeful start, seeing San Marino's losing streak extend to 35 oh, games. One of these oh, matches oh, included oh. a 10 1 annihilation at the hands of the Belgians, but they oh, did score thanks to Andy more. Selva once again. Again. This made Let's Selva the first Samarunis player to score more than one goal for his country. Next on the campaign was a trip to Latvia, who had previously well, defeated San Marino a couple matches well, they can prior in Latvia. They can, I believe, go on. Latvia went up I believe can, through Southampton forward Marian's box. In the second half, however, second off, San Marino's Nicola no, no, Albani no, scored the equalizer no, no, and San Marino yes, would yes, see yes. out a one-all draw. Thus ending yes, Bidani's 35 match point. losing streak with just their second ever point one in international one point. competition. Say it was Come also on, San Marino's first ever away point. While the San Marinis were celebrating the draw like they had just won the World Cup, Latvia's coach Gary Johnson And what is Aleppo? No, not that one. Was fired immediately after the match. And Latvian reporter <laughs> You draw against San Marino, your job's done. You kicked out. had dubbed the draw as Latvian football's darkest day. San Marino lost darkest the remaining three qualifiers, drawing. but Adam That's Selva incredible. was starting to make scoring against Belgium a habit of his. Euro 2004 qualifying was another campaign where San Marino would not score a single goal. Didani nearly got their third ever point, but a heartbreaking they own need goal to actually from Carlos Valentini in the 89th minute not, ended not those Not just hopes. bus drivers. Nevertheless, there was a friendly right before San Marino's last Euro 2004 qualifier still take those. Sweden. The opponents were Liechtenstein and the San Marini scored Jeez. twice in the two-all draw. Then on April 28, 2004, Come another on. friendly Come on, versus Marino. Liechtenstein, Zeta Valle witnessed a stellar free kick from Andy Selva which found the top left corner in the Ooh. fifth minute. Titani went on to hold off the opposing Liechtenstein attack and won their first ever match in their 14th. Vamos! Vamos! Let's go, San Marino! 1-0 win! Destroyed! Lichtenstein. Come on! What a win! What a win! Year Finally! The Samarinis would ride win. a high they had never experienced in a friendly, before but for we the take next it. four months. Come on. Then reality hit them again. I don't really need to say it for the seventh time, okay? It was probably not fun for oh, San boy. Marino here. Nevertheless, though, as the saying goes, they won a nothing game, though. is certain except death, taxes, and Andy Selva scoring against Belgium. He Andy Selva guy. In the following Selva. Baller. In 2006, Titani San lost Marino to Albania goat. right before the Euro 2008 qualifiers, extending their losing streak to 12 since their historic victory. But that was nowhere near the worst thing to happen to the San Marinis in 2006. You might remember, Germany at the time had just come off losing to eventual champions Italy at a World Cup they hosted. And let me tell you something about the German special champions Italy at a World Cup they hosted. And let me tell you something Something about the Germans post World Cup. You did not want to face them, especially if you were San Marino, who were practically Italian in their eyes. The score ended 13 0 to the Germans, their largest victory Ooh. since 1940 when 12 minutes, no mercy. They played Finland, and as we all Only remember, one as well. they were a bit different back then. In the end, San Marino finished their Euro 2008 for a bit different back. Uh, okay.
Okay, okay. In the end, San Marino finished their Euro 2008 qualifying campaign last, conceding a whopping 57 goals. Yeah, we won't talk about Wales again. Uh, we'll just keep that one quiet. But despite losing all 12 matches, San Marino only lost by one goal at home in matches versus Cyprus, Wales, How and Ireland. Bro, the bro, Ireland I, match in particular bro, one what? goal at home in matches versus Cyprus, Wales, come on, man. Wales and... Come on, man. Robert Earnshaw. Bro, you got a bad hat trick against these. Selva, though. Nah, Selva's OP. And all right, Ireland. all right, all right. Can't blame us. Selva is OP. Almost as painful as the 13-0 loss to Germany. 21-year-old Manuel Marani had scored a late equalizer versus a strong Irish side on paper that struggled to <laughs> break the times. San Marino were now <laughs> within like just 10 Jones minutes goal. of winning a historic Crawled it across points. the floor. Oh, would you believe it? Sweet. Would you believe it? Stephen Ireland. Oh, right. Oh, my God. Last 2010 minute. World Cup qualifying. Same story. San Marino conceded 47 times and gave Poland their largest victory ever. However, on the positive side, wow, Andy Dalsky's Selva managed back then. his eighth and final goal versus Slovakia. Let's Selva go, Selva. would go on to play for his country until 2016, and his reign as top scorer for San Marino will probably last decades. Even with a journeyman career that <laughs> would only see beaten. Selva play for lower division clubs with mixed success, Selva will always be remembered by the San Marini's faithful. Debatably, he's the national team's best ever player. Euro 2012 so qualifiers funny. were just oh, pure oh, oh. torment. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Minus 53 goal difference. Just pure torment. As Titani finished with 53 conceded, oh, all losses, no. and no goals scored. The year of our Lord 2012 came around, and before any threat of the end being near conceded, for humanity, more history scored. would be made when Manuel Marani became the only Why player San in San Marino's history to score more than one goal in a friendly goal versus Malta. In the same year, World Cup 2014 qualifiers had kicked off. After seven matches and 38 goals conceded, San Marino what? scored their first competitive goal right, in let's nearly go, let's five go, let's go. years you can beat them. Poland. Despite on. the result being a 5-1 loss, Alessandro De La Valle right, was able to relish in a rare celebration amongst the San Marini's bench. Another viral moment for Titani was when they returned to Wembley for the first time go since on. Galtieri's iconic go goal. On, but it wasn't a goal him. this time, it wasn't even a moment during the match. It was the lineup British Network ITV displayed which showed the San Marini's lineup <laughs> and every Yo, San Marino professionals, yo, they violated accountant, bar owner, footballer. Wow, they got one footballer there. Student, accountant, bank clerk, barman, olive oil company, student, furniture company, lighting company, PE teacher. Bro, they miss a bus driver in here. Their coach is even a PE teacher. That's that's actually professions. Funny. But there's one, one footballer in there though. that deserves more attention. Goalkeeper Aldo Simoncini. Simoncini was a highly rated teenager at then Serie B club Modena back in 2004. The goalkeeper was unlike any other talent right. San Marino had seen in a long time. But then things took a turn for the worst. Simoncini, at age 19, suffered life threatening injuries in a terrible Ooh. car accident. I spent five to six months Ooh. in bed without moving. When I first got up, I had no muscles left at all. I had lost eight, nine Ooh. kilograms of muscle mass. It was Jeez. a very difficult moment. Usually, struggles he like these would goat. force people into retirements, but Simoncini was determined to make a return to what he loved, even oh, if nice. his career would never reach the heights once imagined with his time at the top big level over. We can all look at Simoncini's career as a big what if, but for the goalkeeper himself and thousands of other players like him, he it's not about it. becoming the best player in the league or at the Turn biggest club, but do. being able to play the game they love at the end of the day. Euro 2016 qualification was quite positive in terms of San oh, Marino oh, standards. Right. Only 35 Minus Didani ended a 62 game losing streak with a nil nil draw against Estonia. And who Come else on. but the legend himself, Aldo Simoncini, to have the game of his life to maintain Let's a clean go, sheet? Simoncini. This was catch. San Marino's first clean sheet since near 2004 when they beat Liechtenstein. And, and their third uh, ever. So it was also the first time something. San Marino had earned a point in a competitive match since 2001. Then later on in the campaign, graphic designer Matteo oh, Vitaioli oh, scored Titani's like first away goal in 14 years against <laughs> Lithuania. <laughs> Immediately the after the goal, goal, San Marino's Twitter even took a- Hold on. Hold on. San Marino better than Cristiano Ronaldo. Goals for San Marino in September 1. Goals for Cristiano Ronaldo in September 0. Alright, bro. Yeah, yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo. Game. But just when Titani were about to earn a record two points in a qualifying competition, scenes of Ireland 2007 came back to haunt them. During their World Cup 2018 qualification campaign, San humbled. Marino yeah, made a visit come to the Oslo game. for the first time since they were destroyed 10-0 in 1992. Ronnie. And I'm sure Mattia Stefanelli's historic equalizer in the 54th Sim minute tasted oh so sweet. <laughs> 
<laughs> Even though Norway went on to win 4-1, this was San Marino's first World Cup qualification goal since Come 2001. On, Later into the campaign, Titani scored another away goal in a 5-1 loss to Azerbaijan. Mirko Palacios' header. header placed him into the annals of San Marino's Bolt football corner. history as San Marino yet again finished with zero points. The biggest storyline of this campaign, 49. however, was when Jeez. San Marino played Germany. After an 8-0 win for the Germans in Serra Valle, Thomas oh. Muller in a post-match interview questioned the point of such uneven games. He went on to add, I understand that for them, it is special to play against the world champions. I also understand that they can only defend with tough tackling. For this reason though, I wonder if these are games which bring unnecessary risks. In oh, response, gee, Director of Communications Alan Gasparoni wrote a lengthy and angry response consisting of 10 reasons why the match was useful. The two parties made up in the Let's end, but this was some amusing beef. Lewandowski. <laughs> you know, Robert Lewandowski. Before Euro 2020 qualifiers, I want to see what he said. Though. He wrote a lengthy. It served to show that even against the poor teams such as ours, you can't score a goal and don't say you're pissed. Whoa, what the hell? So don't say you're pissed when it's Simeone who denies you. Yo, he's actually like swearing in this letter. An angry response consisting of ten reasons why the match. It served to your good friend Gnabry to begin with by scoring three goals. Now he can ask where this renewal of his contract can be twice or what? It served to make me realise that even if you weren't near the most beautiful Adidas kiss, underneath you'll always be the ones that put white socks under the sandals. Which was useful. The two party- Bro's having a go at him for wearing socks and sandals. He's made up in the <laughs> end, what? but this was some amusing beef. Lewandowski. What? What have I just you read? Know, Robert Lewandowski. Before Euro 2020 qualifiers, San Marino read? appointed head coach Franco Varela, whose goal was to change the overall the attitude of the team. As well, he or? brought in youngsters and was strict with the squad, always urging professionalism and a desire to improve. No longer were matches just about letting in six right, and then Marino, trading shirts at the Come end. On. After suffering eight defeats in the journey of qualifying for Euro 2020, finally something positive happened when Filippo Berardi would score Titani's first home goal All in right. six years in a 3-1 loss versus Kazakhstan. Uh, 3-1 loss, right? Alright, it's only a 3-1 loss. Liverpool actually are the Back new Back in 2018 Sabarino. popped up this brand new competition. <laughs> The UEFA Nations League. The competition was to help minnows like San Marino arrange matches. It oh, would also help the benefit these lower ranked nations financially as TV money would be I more guess centralized. This is the reason Zidani that. would now see more matches against teams closer to their level. However, 2018-19 wasn't so great with San Marino finishing last and not scoring one goal. Then came 2020-21's UEFA Nations League. San Marino were grouped with Gibraltar come on, and you're a team they had been familiar yeah. with before. Which yes, is yes, the opening matches didn't go yes, so well, on. but at least the score lines weren't 7-8-9. But next was a match against Liechtenstein. Okay. Going yeah, into yeah, this match, this. Liechtenstein's this. record was 156 lost, 16 drawn, and 17 won. San You've Marino's, on, on the yeah. other hand, was 162 lost, 4 drawn, and just 1 win, dating back to that history. Alright, this is Liverpool versus Chelsea. Who's gonna win? Night in 2004. Who's but gonna despite win this? the odds and having less possession throughout, San Marino Liverpool held Chelsea. strong and had the better chances overall. Neither all team right, scored, right. and the match ended in a draw. Marking oh, draw just like Liverpool Chelsea. Six then. years. Right. Next was the final Nations League group match. All right, that's about with Gibraltar in Serra Valle. A couple days before the game, San Marino lost to Latvia in a friendly, so here was a decent chance to bounce back. And bounce back they did. No the way. match ended in a nil-nil draw once again. <laughs> Although such an insignificant oh, result for the rest of the world, <laughs> the for the San Marinis, so it was record-breaking. The result the marked the first so... time San nil, Marino nil. didn't lose two matches in a row, oh. and it meant everything to the players. It's times like these that remind us why- There's no way he's crying after Oftentimes that. we are told There's football no is a result crying after but that. no matter how many trophies, Goals or even wins we have, all around the globe. Yo, this Macwell guy is taking the piss, really. Passion for the sport that captured our What's hearts. Sad San Marino for? are a team made up of mostly amateurs. They spend their days working as bankers, dentists, accountants, and they spend their nights dreaming big. It takes extraordinary strength of mind and character, knowing just how much the odds are against you. It's honestly quite admirable. Passion well, allows one to surpass any hardship in the country. These lads just have to work. Alright, fancy playing for San the Marino national team? I'm in. Mean. Guys, can we get a show of hands? Who's up to play for the national team tonight? We're down two. Have we got two more players? Guys, I'll put in the group chat now. Can anyone else play tonight? Oh, we need to we need to get eleven to play tonight. Bro. Oh, I know I know my my friend's son. He's he's a student. He can play. Yes. Bring him in. Bro. 
This year, San Marino celebrated their 90th anniversary, playing England with a special kit carrying vibrant colors throwing back to San Marino's flag from 1465 to 1797. Hey, if anyone who works closely with the Federation could hit me up with one of these kits, yeah, that'd I'd be love really, it, really cool, and I'd love you. The scoreline, however, was a dull contrast. Oh, San Marino oh, lost 10-0. The result yet again sparked up a debate about UEFA's international qualifying structure. A lot of people Saka, have wow. this perception that teams like San Marino surely have reached the stage where the lowest ranked nation should play among themselves to qualify for the right to play at this level has become an absurd have no right playing at the same level as nations like germany and i think England. it's a waste of time i don't know if that's a privilege <laughs> many nations have prompted calls for minnows like I san marino to be consigned to their own pre-qualification groups so instead of quote unquote wasting the top european nation's time they duke it out amongst themselves to prove who was quote unquote worthy to be fair it's a pretty good proposal as the number of competitive matches between europe's minnows it's would increase many. helping them improve yeah, they play and enjoy more, more success they play more. however a plan should only be put in place because it's in the interests of all concerned and not just nations who are tired of playing san marino but even then i feel like people misunderstand the purpose of international football. For most countries in the world, there's no hope of ever experiencing glory in a major tournament. Many will never even qualify yeah. for one. Yet governing bodies continue admission to official competitions because international football is more than just the sport itself. It's about identity and representation. There's a reason sure, why sure, Massimo sure. Bonini all those years back repeatedly rejected Italian call-ups to wait for San Marino to be given eligibility. Had he decided to play for Italy, he would have had to give up his San Marini citizenship a part of his own identity. When asked later in his life what football was to him, Bonini simply said, a dream come true. He couldn't care less about success, and he definitely wasn't going to trade away his own identity for it. For Bonini, purely sure play for, for the soul of the game. Sure. FAs are using naturalization more than ever to improve their teams, but they're sure, greeted sure. by reactions of unease. Because at the end of the day, international football should be about the accurate representation. Quick note, Mbappe was born in Paris. I don't want to hear some bullshit in the comments representation of a country's people. Despite being ranked last in the world, San Marino's FA refused I mean, to a lot of the French team, yeah. results. That purity of that San French, Marino's approach I saw the picture about what, that that French World Cup winning team. Africa were robbed for some borders. International man. football is really about identity and representation. And boom, now we all know a little bit more about San Marino's national team. I wanted to make this video specifically because I felt like the media's portrayal of the San Marini's football team is just kind of unfair. It's almost bullying. It's always the same three things True. every single year. It's always, oh, San Marino and all their occupations outside their football team. Then, oh, San Marino's lost 10-0 once again. Should we even be playing these teams True. anymore? It's the same thing over and over again, and it's finally time that there's just another perspective that is shared to the world. I just want to... Uh, apart from those last two minutes, that's... I don't know whether I'm being silly, but that's what I got from the video. San Marino, I wish you the best, but you were just the international version of Liverpool this season. Yeah, WVID, let's go.